The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good day, traders, and welcome to Weekly Trading Recap, 22nd of January 2018. My, Nenad, my name is Nenad, and uh, today, of course, Forex, Equities, Commodities. Previous week was, again, very good regarding our setups. Most of the setups came in profit. Some of setups uh, were closed in a loss, but most of them were actually closed in a good profit. And now I will show you uh, what happened just before. I do it. Uh, let's do a quick recap. So, risk disclaimer: uh, CFD and forex and leverage products can result in losses that exceed your deposits. So, those are not suitable for everyone. Please ensure that you fully understand the risks involved. And this presentation and the video is for information and educational purposes only. Please read the full risk disclosure on this web address. Why do we trade with Armor Markets? Excellent index offerings, DEX 30, CFD mini contracts starting from 0.1 lots, and of course, you can also trade micro lots. Excellent account safety, including negative balance protection policy and VPS settings. You can always try to trade on MT5 and see the future of retail trading. So my name is Nenad again. Uh, patience is the key to trading success and always try to be patient. Wait for the setup to develop. And of course, always use protective stops. Don't trade with big risks because if you go with high risk, uh, chances that you can nullify all good trades that you made with lower risk. Rules and setups for our weekly recap. Give price a breathing room, room and enter within the zone, okay? Zone is usually within 15 pips of the predicted level. And if it's an agreement with your system, you can trade it. Scaling in is optional. Okay, also do commodities. And if you trade commodities, watch the zone around the level. It's not the same as Forex. Try to see the zone. And if you see a signal, then enter the zone. Same for equities. Watch the zone. Their, their zones are slightly higher than on Forex market. So try to use your own price action knowledge uh, around the zones that I post. Some indices use big stop losses and you need to incorporate your uh, risk threshold within these stop losses. Recommended risk is 0.5 to 2% per trade and maximum is 5% for all trades. Do not exceed 5% because if you do, then, well, your account might be in danger. So if you lose, guys, you should always aim to lose maximum 5% for all trades. Respect your stop loss. Add a spread to your stop loss, even if you trade via ECN. Always add two to five pips plus spread, depending on pair traded. Always add a spread to your stop loss, no matter which market you trade. We take only one position per listed pair, so it's either positional or breakout trade or alternative trade, whichever hits first. If we see a breakout trade, then we can do it independently of any position because it is an additional trade. First touch of the zone is the most profitable. That is why we need to focus on the first touch. Positional trades are trend trades and alternative trades are called counter trend trades. Breakout trades and scalp trade levels can be traded in a penalty of any position. Depending on time and volatility, we use profit stop after 20 pips, but not less. For equities and commodities, protect your profits around important levels and use your trailing stop. These setups are valid for today, tomorrow, and sometimes a day after tomorrow. Pay attention to my Twitter updates. Scalp trades should be done at or very close to important support resistance levels. All those trades are calculated by historic levels in Camarilla. And pips pool, it is the, the maximum available number of pips you could have got on my setups. Results for 22nd of January 2018. Euro dollar positional server was good for 25 pips or it was a loss, depending uh, how you traded, where you put your protective stop or if you didn't put your protective stop, the chance is that it went into a loss. Positional sell trade, 30 pip on pound dollar. Australian dollar positional buy was good for 60 because it hit a target price, but it also uh, went above my TP. It went almost to 160 pips in profit. CAD yen positional sell was also good for 100 pips. Gold was uh, the, the loss. It was a loss. Minus 50 pips. And WTI 200 fractional pips. So if you traded, if you traded uh, these setups, definitely, definitely the best trade of the week, or I can say trades of the week were Australian dollar and WTI. 
uh, total amount of pips possible 325 to 475 well even if you got 50 percent out of out of it it's good because this was the maximum available number of pips now this was euro dollar and uh, the trade that i posted on euro dollar sometimes these trades can uh, reverse from uh, well basically a few times happen that uh, it hits stop loss then reverses but either way basically it's euro dollar was uh, very good in start but then it reversed so it went almost to 22 but it stopped at 22 22 so we didn't take this long trade and then it went to 23 60 and here this was the last chance to go short uh before the actual top was made 25 20 so you could have shorted this here this here but this also zone was good so as i say it depends whether you were protecting your profits or not if if yes then you would make profits if not then this was a loss still it rejected from the poc zone gbp dollar similar uh, thing with uh, as with euro dollar but gbp dollar moved a little bit better because it uh, rejected uh, from uh, 40 50 then it went up then again it tried to reject here for some pips and then it went up but the initial rejection was okay not ideal trades because pairs reversed basically they all went up and then started to drop australian dollar uh, on the contrary was definitely very very good uh, 79.50 almost came to to the exact price and then it spiked to the upside leaving no trade for retracement except here and it would have been a great trade if you if you if you well maybe you you take uh, you took the full profit but then even if you protected it or put your stop loss to break even maybe there is a chance that you made uh, this high of a profit this because it really uh, went up i personally didn't well i took uh, some uh, 30 40 pips out of this one but yet again it was a good one considering uh, that it made an ascending scallop and that it almost uh, well it, it hit the target price but it almost breached another uh, weekly level on camarilla by that time uh, then it dropped and then it spiked again so definitely this was a clear uptrend on uh, australian dollar and uh, this setup uh, i can say this could have been uh, easily the best setup the setup of the week kdn yet again uh, this also could have been uh, one of the best setups although uh, if you remember i told you that i went short on kdn uh, during the webinar and uh, well i had australian dollar if i remember during the live webinar and kdn both came in profit uh, kdn uh, went it, it was not close to stop loss it was 20 pip shy from stop loss but then it, it started to drop and this was also very very good trade so if you followed uh, also a live uh, session recap these were uh, setups that happened i think during the webinar so australian dollar and kdn were, were were very very good gold setup was a loss because gold really uh, went up heavily we had a positional sell here it made initially some profits but i don't think it was enough basically it rejected from this uh, price uh, towards this price so i don't think uh, that it was a profit mostly this was a loss and it hit stop loss then it it, it dropped but from 1366 and wti uh, again this also qualifies for the trade of the week excellent uh, price rejection from the zone 6300 price went to 63.18 and bang it went heavily to the upside so if you traded oil wti i think that uh, this would have been easily the trade of the week for you so basically uh we had uh, these results as i say this is the maximum available number of pips so even if you didn't take uh, the full price projections full pips it's still was uh, good to trade and i think that uh, these setups were very good considering that market was very very vol volatile uh, during the previous week also guys uh, 
uh, want to share something with you here uh, this would have been great if you actually uh, vote for us uh, you know that forex awards are basically running and uh, currently uh, this is the link guys you can vote for us uh, definitely would appreciate your support uh, you need to log in to your google account and only one vote per account is uh, counted here uh, under best sell side analysis contributors chris and i have been nominated in front of admiral markets for the best awards during uh, for forex 3 2018 uh, voting uh, will be over on february 2nd so yes if you have few minutes then we would really appreciate to vote for us it's good you know it's it's a uh, it's uh, it's always nice to be uh, in uh, in uh, nominated uh, uh, at one of the best forex websites so yeah here a best sell site analysis contributors so thank you for your support as always and let's see now uh, today's possible setups uh euro dollar i will buy euro dollar yes uh, 23.15 if it starts to drop uh further i would go with a buy position mondays are usually uh we can see some reversals uh on a uh, euro dollar but yet again i had personally one trade today and i'm still in 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 australian dollar trade because i have two trades i had a dollar yen and i made a loss of 35 pips early morning trade for dollar yen uh, initially it was good for 15 pips but then it reversed because uh, well it happens uh, on mondays but i will uh, do a short on dollar yen again because i think the dollar yen uh, could retrace but i'm waiting for dollar yen to actually uh, to actually uh, if it if it wants to go higher then i will be waiting for uh, euro uh, for dollar yen to short it again i will show you the level uh, a little bit later euro dollar uh, for me 2315 and uh, stop loss 22.85 is uh, a buy trade. Uh, just give me a few seconds and I will show you a real chart and then I will tell you why I think so. Let me just remove my. Okay, this will be actually euro dollar here. So uh, definitely for me, euro dollar is still in uptrend and uh, if you make a uh, ascending trend line here you can actually see that uh, euro dollar uh, is trying to get towards monthly h5 to retest monthly h5 and then go more to the upside here on four hour time frame we also have an order block here this is an order block uh, 23 25 so you see 23 25 23 15 uh, everything is is basically within this this zone here so if euro dollar proceeds further with a drop then as i say again i will be will be waiting uh i will be waiting there and i might go with a buy position uh this look this is still looking bullish until i see uh real clear clear uh, close below 2300 and uh, downward price action then i would assume that this is still bullish although bullishness can appear here uh, above a weekly h3 but the first rejection definitely could happen around 2315 2300 you see th th these levels basically so watch for signs of exhaustion here if you make pending orders then it's always good to uh, divide your positions like if you want to trade let's say 0 0.3 lots then you divide 0 0.10 here, 0 0.10 here, 0 0.10 here, and wait uh, because it's the zone. So the zone is we had a volatile price action previous week, so that is that is why zones are a little bit wider than usual. But definitely this looks like uptrend. Still no signs of reversal, uh, and this looks also bullish. And this is an order block, a lot of confluence there even if we try to add fibonacci we don't need to but i'm sure that we will actually see a number here so euro dollar this is it euro dollar uh, i don't see a sell at this point because to me this is still bullish 
uh, the only way I would sell it is if it really goes above this level there and makes new uh, monthly quarterly levels until then this is buy the dip uh, until proven otherwise uh, GBP dollar still in uptrend as I say position now could be the time to go long uh, as I say I I'm a little bit uh, I, I already have Australian dollar but I am also thinking about uh, placing GBP dollar long uh, it's in the zone basically but still as I say uh, it's I don't want to over risk because I had personally 2.5% uh, risk on dollar yen now I have 2.5% risk on Australian dollar so my risk threshold is already uh, you know full I really am a bit of maybe conservative trader and uh, you know, if I risk, if let's say, if I had risked one uh, percent only for these two trades, I would say I will. I would say I am going long now on GBP dollar. But definitely, this is the zone. Uh, this is weekly retest of the zone. You see, the, basically, the price is retesting these weekly levels here. So that is why I'm saying uh, it already dropped, hitting weekly levels. So you know, it could go up. It could even drop, hitting stop loss, but it's up to you whether you will take this. As I say, this is still bullish, but you see, 39.90 is a stop because uh, 40.00 is psychological level. It should be protected. The ATR projection is 40.19, uh, so it's still below the full uh, price projection to the low side. So yet again, think about it. For me, this could be a long, but I am already within my risk threshold. Uh, Australia, and of course, I'm talking about live account. On demo account, we can do whatever we want on, un, uh, unless we are trading de demo and we are treating demo as if it were a live account. But if you want to really follow your, uh, prof be professional in trading, then you need to respect your risk threshold. So if you say my maximum risk is 10%, do not go more than 10%. If you say my maximum risk is 1%, do not go more than 1%. I know it's tempting. I know it's hard sometimes, but that is the way to success. That is how you can make success in Forex trading. You need to follow your risk management. So I would probably go long, would add here, but I cannot do it because on my live accounts, I'm already, my risk threshold is already full. Australian dollar. I'm in a trade, guys. I'm in a trade. My entries are 8090 and 1885. Uh, to me, this is bullish. Uh, Australian dollar is, uh, for me, it's bullish. So I have two positions. First position is in profit. Second position is uh, currently around break even. So uh, according to technical uh, overview and overlook, and look, this is bullish. It still has the room towards MH5. And I think there could be even a retest. And you see ATR projection goes higher. So there could be maybe uh, even uh, another leg to the upside on daily time frame. It is indeed level uh, to to take profits, but it, it still has the room to, uh, to that level. And uh, this is V-shaped reversal. So let's see. One hour also, uh, pro it, it's showing uh, confluence with type 1, type 2 trades from my Camarilla MACD method. We also have ascending trend line. We also have a couple of trend lines. Uh, it's above daily L3. So uh, if it wants to go up, it should break this consolidation and move further to the upside. So I'm in this trade. Let's see. Uh, Ilya is asking uh, about this link. Ilya, this link is for uh, the link that I sent is the link uh, to vote for uh, Chris and me if you have time. Uh, this is Forex Awards, best Forex Street Awards in 2018. Uh, we have been nominated, both Chris and I, in front of other markets. Our analysis that we provide to uh, Forex Street has been nominated for the best. So if you want to support us, feel free to use the link and vote for us here. Uh, have in mind that only one vote is allowed because you need to log in with your with your Gmail account and then vote. 
So try to use it. I think it should be good. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you guys for, for all of your support, of course. And uh, let's see. Uh, dollar yen. Uh, today I made a dollar yen trade 109.70 sell. And my trade was, uh, well, uh, it was like, uh, first it went in profits. 75 to 85 and then it went uh, in a loss because dollar yen reversed uh, what i see is another short on dollar yen uh, that could happen uh, probably during asian session uh, 109.50 stop is 109.90 108.30 is tp uh, so uh, dollar yen it, it's now you know i i had a stop loss only Three, four, it's four pips above my uh, level. It was 109.19. Maybe if uh, someone traded uh, short, if uh, a trader put a, a short slightly higher, maybe it could reverse. But uh, no matter what, I personally had a loss on that trade. So I would, I would short it there. And uh, I'm thinking also about making a pending order that should uh, activate during the night. Uh, blind order, naked trade, Camarilla, pure Camarilla trade, because I have a lot of confluence here. I have also a trend line. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Also, I have, you see, I also have 88.6 retracement. So if it goes up, then I think it should reverse. Otherwise, it could create uh, some bigger, bigger, bigger retracement, and that will be an intraday uptrend. So at this point, this looks like it could go down, but because I already lost my trade today, I will short it higher. I'm not shorting it now. I don't know. Maybe I should have put stop loss uh, even higher. I usually put my stop loss uh, two pips uh, uh, plus uh, two to five pips uh, for uh, uh, two pips. of. I always count two pips of a spread. No matter if I trade uh, ECN or other accounts, I, I use two pips of, of a spread. Although uh, ECN has 0 0.5, I treat it as two. And I always add in between two and five pips above that. So it's like five to 10 pips above stop loss level. That is how I do it. Just to cover for some potential fake outs or, you know, not at, at the exact level. Always adding few pips here and there. So maybe I should have put it a little bit higher, but still, it doesn't matter. If it wants to go higher, I will short it here. Clear as that. And really, I'm thinking about making a blind trade. Uh, whatever happens, uh, I think I will do it, and I might update it in a Telegram channel later during the night. So, well, we will see. Buy trade. I'm not buying this, really. I'm not buying into this now. I want to drop. I want it to drop a little bit down uh, towards weekly L1 this level. So if it wants to go more to the upside, then definitely should retest this level at least come to this point of trend line. So this is the zone to sell. Another zone, 109, 30, 40, 50, something like that, and then uh, I think it could reject lower. Gold. It's dropping, uh, but uh, it's now making some sort of a downtrend just for gold traders. Uh, I'm not particularly a big gold trader. I'm more, more focused really on currencies and uh, on, uh, let's say, WTI, but mostly on, on currency pairs. But gold definitely, this now marks a potential downtrend. It, it, it is, in fact, in, in uptrend. But on intraday time frame, this is big. So on intraday time frame, this is like, like this was a big trend line. It made a retest, drop further. So from intraday perspective, it's in downtrend. Where would we sell? Where would we buy? 13.65 is sell. Okay, so I would weigh the price really to go to this weekly H3, daily H4, before I want to sell it. Because now it, it's really low, and 13.30 is basically, if, if it drops here, guys, this is the zone that you want to go long. 
because it's now at weekly L3. It could reject from this level because usually during Monday, price tends to go between L3 and H3. So this could be the bottom. Let's see if this makes a, a reversal candle that this can really go uh, higher. But I would go purely from Camarilla. Would go possibly long here, but if it drops, then this is the level to go. And this is the level to short. Weekly H3 hasn't been retested yet. So it's still level to go short, this one here. Pay attention, guys, to that level. Here and there. And uh, this is so. This is gold and uh, optional. Again, WTI. If you trade oil, then 64.30 is buy. 64.90 is a breakout sell, guys. So if it breaks this M pattern here, this could be a sell. Watch this, guys. M, bearish M. So sell below this point and buy if it drops here. Weekly L4, very strong level. So this, this could be good. If it breaks it down, we take profits and then go long. Because when you trade breakouts, you can have multiple positions. You can have a breakout trade and another alternative or positional trade. That is how I do it. So yeah, you can actually potentially go long there or bank. If it breaks, take the profit and go long there. I mean, it might not it might not go straight towards this level, but either way, go down, you take profits, and then if it drops more, you can go long. Watch for this breakout. It, it's it, it looks good, but I don't know when it will happen. Now it's the end of day so but if it happens i think this could be a nice trade okay guys so that was it regarding this uh weekly recap setups until wednesday this is valid until wednesday then during wednesday guys uh we might see uh, and we will see new setups but uh, then again it's important for you to understand that if you want to take all of these setups you don't you you should you should, let's say, take 1% of risk for each trade. Do not exceed 5%. I mean, I know it's tempting, and I know that a lot of you lose because of bad money management. But then again, guys, if you really, if you really know about uh, money management, how we do it, how I show you, then what? If you lose a trade from time to time, you're still safe. Uh, I know it's tempting to put 20, 30, risk in a single trade but in the long run it won't do any good in the long run let me uh, show you the setups and then i will i will answer your questions now your questions guys uh Ilya is saying uh Ah, Ilya, uh, of course, Ilya, no problem. Uh, he's traveling 70 kilometers to work. Wow, that, that's really, that's, that's, whew, that's, that's far. Uh, uh, okay, uh, let's see now setups. GBP and Australian dollar. Yes, this is the GBP. And Australian dollar, I'm in this trade. Currently, guys, I'm in this trade. My entries are 80, 85, 80, 90. I put my stop loss at 80, 53. It, it is the level, but you know, guys, we all trade with probably with different spreads. I don't know. Uh, if you trade via, via ECN, it's different. If you trade via standard account, if you have some uh, smaller spread or you want to protect, you need to always count it. So, Maybe you can put it around 80, 55. I'm always a little bit cautious. So I had a few pips here and there. So let, let's see. Australian dollar is a buy indeed for me. So uh, New Zealand dollar. Uh, okay, Elmo is asking about GBP yen. Yeah, GBP yen. Uh, you see, it's, uh, it's basically rejecting similar to dollar yen. 
it's close to this this uh, this is th these are actually uh, order blocks so this is the order block this is the order block uh you see it's retracing now on one hour so i would say if it doesn't retrace here if it doesn't drop from this level i would be paying attention to 153.80 for potential rejections but i think that the pound yen could go could drop but somewhere here you know it's monday and mondays are definitely not my favorite days to trade especially because uh price might reverse then form a new trend so it's better to wait for a retracement on pound yen i think although you see it it, it rejected here so it could actually break this now and go up uh new zealand dollar Ilya is asking about new zealand dollar okay new zealand dollar wow this is looking now bearish to me on all time frames i would be waiting for this level here potentially here again if the price retraces there or even there to these order blocks i would be looking for short setups but i would i would like to see a little bit of retracement then another show, short setup so new zealand dollar is looking bearish for buy trades if it doesn't now Ilya, 73.10 it's it's okay it's weekly l3 so it can go up if you want to go with trend then you can go short here if you go counter trend then yes it could go there from this point it could go up from this point and it could go up from 72 65 to 50 you know th these are levels to go long yeah so on low, low higher time frames this is the level this is the level too so now it's actually it's it's at a level to go long not to go short so for short you need to wait for retracements yeah it could go you know this is your time frame is is a bit higher daily right so uh wow this this is big stop loss for you Ilya. but as i say this could start to go up even sooner eric is asking uh about uh euro uh, dollar do we have do we have a divergence there well basically there how can i say this this is yeah i mean this looks like divergence indeed but uh i would i would definitely as i say uh if it drops i would go for a buy trade really really for me uh, still uh, euro dollar is inclined to go up but uh, as i say it's tricky now it's really tricky let me just take a quick look yeah what i'm seeing here is indeed a possible continuation hidden bullish divergence you see this is hidden bullish divergence there so it could actually go up eric you see you have a hidden bull hidden bullish divergence there see this is hidden bull and weekly l3 a lot of confluence so you see Ilya is saying I have to leave now. Last train from work to home. Greetings and regards for everybody here. Thank you, Ilya. Have a good trip. So yeah, this is bullish again, Eric. Uh, as I said, it could have started its up move from 2340. I'm not saying it will drop. Then obviously this is the zone. Now somewhere here it should have started its up move. Let's see if this is. I mean, this is four hour time frame so it still could go more up and down but i think it could reject from this zone indeed this is looking bullish to me uh gbp swiss next question oh this is very bearish and i would be waiting for one hour 
if it goes up here from this spot, yeah, still, you see, it's close to weekly L3. If it goes here, then I would look for a short trade. This is looking, this is looking bearish to me, and this could be another short from this spot. Protect your profits if it drops here, because it could make a bigger retracement, but if it drops there, I think this could be a good for short. So, yeah, that was it. If you have any more questions, guys, please ask me. If not, then... Uh, ah, Euro Swiss 4-hour, Kelvin is asking. Euro Swiss 4-hour time frame. Let's see, Euro Swiss. Euro Swiss, okay. Need to find it here. Just give me a few seconds. Euro Swiss. I knew I had it there. No, no, no. Let, let's wait, 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 wait. Symbols. Then we will go with Euro Swiss is there. I'm not sure why I don't, I don't see it. I will go quickly but i have two charts open so if i run yeah this is it euros we see daily downtrend it co it came close to quarterly l3 now it's rejecting four hours still retracement i would go with a short trade on euros we see kelvin according to camarilla mcd you had a short trade here very good type one type two entries aligned you know about Camarilla MACD, so you had a type 1, type 2 entry here aligned, you see, with a trend line also there, type 2, type 1, in the zone. Wow, this was very good trade. Unfortunately, I missed it, but this was very, very good setup. Much better than dollar yen that I traded. This, this was excellent. So I would say if it gets there, you can go short, follow the rules. This is where price could potentially go and then short it. I'm not sure that it could. It needs to break definitely WL3 to proceed further down. But initially, this could go short again. But obviously, it's retracing from weekly L3. Obviously. So if Euro dollar goes up, I think Euro Swiss will follow and look for potential shorts there and protect your trades once you're in profit. It, it depends really which session the, the price will actually turn. Uh, uh, you are long from 1556. Yes, counter trade trade opportunity. So good, but please watch if it if it breaks this high, then follow this zone. It needs to actually hit the zone. Then you protect your trade because it it could drop. Uh, all if it breaks with a strong momentum uh, upside, then it could be a trend change, but it could drop really. Euro Australian dollar question for Euro Australian dollar. Let's see. Oh, I can. Okay, 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 okay. Euro Australian dollar here. Again, weekly L3 rejections. Really, these weekly L3 rejections are excellent. Where these Camarillas weekly L3 rejection straight. Now it's it's still down, but it's rejecting. One hour. I would I would wait for possibly maybe this could be a scalp swing on 15 minute time frame, but it already happened. So I would go with one hour time frame, and this could be actually the entry around daily Camarillas here. As I say, you also have a trend line there. So you don't want this trend line broken. So this could be the zone for a short entry. It should go up, considering that Euro now is retracing to the upside. So yes, it, again, what can I say? It's, it's like 99% of, of all these currencies that we cover today actually happen to reject from weekly L3. That is the power of Camrillas. So thank you guys for listening.
I think that everything is clear now. Uh, please, guys, do not forget to vote for us. Uh, uh, thank you for your comments. Support us, of course. And, of course, uh, if you think that it's worth to, to actually vote for us, okay, this is the form and let's win. Thank you, guys. Uh, I will definitely talk to you soon, very soon, in two days. Uh, pay attention to this and have a great evening, guys, and trade safe. Cheers, everyone.